So web gestalt. So type in w e b g e s t a l t dot org. You should get to this page. So on this one, we want to do methods of interest overrepresented analysis. Again, make sure you, you're bookmarking all this stuff. Phenotype, human phenotype, ontology, that's fine. We can do the functional database. Um, you can add things. Chromosomal location is one thing I did. Cytogenetic band is another thing. So if you want to add a functional database, you hit this plus, and then you just type in what you want to look at. So I don't know, let's do disease on this one. And then you can decide what kind. Ed, I'm just going uh, online Mendelian inheritance and man. I'll use that database. Gene symbol, and then again, we can stick our genes in here. In this case, this is the STK genes. Let me. I'm gonna put the ones we just had. Hold on a sec. There we go. Okay, so these are the genes that are negatively correlated to STK11. And then you can leave this all alone. We don't really have a reference gene list. And hit submit. Again, these are going to give you kind of a very similar um, results to what you're seeing. Again, that pathway analysis is pretty common to everything, right? It's just basically a way to, you know, Every gene that you look at has certain text associated with it that describes it. And if I get a list of a lot of genes, is there any descriptive text that is overrepresented in that list, right? And I can find those. And that's what we do with pathway analysis. Anybody's come up yet? Sometimes we all, like, if everybody hits it at the same time from the same, like, kind of IP location, then the, these websites think they're getting attacked. And so sometimes they set, they shut us down, which really sucks when I give in a workshop. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Now, uh, what do we do for a class? Okay. Nothing yet. Oh, well, while we're waiting, what I'll also mention, and there's no freeware stuff for this, so I can't show you that. Like, I can't, like, we can't demonstrate it with you guys per se, but what I'm really into and what I think is the best is not basically going off of what people say genes are and what pathways are, is actually taking my data and comparing it to actual real data out there. So there's this software called Correlation Engine. Oh, we got some. And you can go to job summary. This kind of tells you what was going on. 200 user IDs, 183. Again, FDR. And so it basically just saying how it, and basically here are the, you can look at like biological pro properties overrepresented. Again, look at, it's all metabolic process, right? You can totally see this here. This is what, this is what STK11 is suppressing, is this metabolic process that gives rise to, you know, that lets these cells grow, right? You can look here, you know, cellular components. A lot of this stuff is in the membrane. Membrane and nucleus, which we might expect, right? And then we're seeing a lot of protein binding, ion binding, you know, again, a lot of me metabolism type molecular functions. And then when we go down here and, you know, I did a based on location, and this is what you find too, is that gene expression just isn't random, right? Again, we talked about epigenetic structures on top of your genes that kind of control all this stuff, but genes that are closer together are more likely to be transcribed because you're loosening that area of the, de the genome, right? And that's what happens is if I need two genes to be expressed at the same time, I'm not putting them all the way across like town, right? I'm not putting them on another chromosome. I'm putting them right next to each other. They're called gene clusters. And so basically what happens is you'll find that it's certain places on the chromosome 
are actually light up more than other places. So in this instance, when I'm looking at genes that do the exact opposite of, you know, STK11, what I'm finding is a lot of chromosome 10, a lot of, oh, actually, I don't see it here. But when you actually take the STK11 genes, you see like a lot of those STK11 genes are located on chromosome 19 in a particular spot. And, and when you look up that spot, you, what you find is you see a lot of deletions in a lot of types of cancer in that particular area. Again, like all this stuff makes sense. Um, what I was going to tell you about was that, again, we're looking for overrepresented biological units, these pathways. But now I think where the, the future of bioinformatics is moving to is by taking, say, I did an experiment, say I take, you know, like, you know, aggressive cancer versus non-aggressive cancer. I find a list of genes that are different, right? Not only do I know what genes are different, but I know the magnitude of the direction of that goes, right? I have a full change associated with that. Then what I can do is I got a list of say, say a thousand genes. What I can do is now take that list and compare it to these databases where they have other gene lists from other studies, right? So what I'm doing is I'm not basically looking for overrepresented targets in my gene or my gene list. What I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I got this gene list. You know, these genes go this way. These genes go this way. Does it look like anything out there? So what you're actually doing is actually using actual studies to basically characterize your gene list. So that if I have a gene list that looks just like this other one, and mine's lung cancer and this one's bladder cancer, I would say these cancers are probably related. And I find that a lot, actually. I find lung cancer related to more like bladder cancer than it is to other forms of lung cancer. And you see that a lot. This can also help you find that, say I have a gene list, I'm looking at a particular cancer, and my list looks like this other cancer and in that other cancer, they used a drug to treat that cancer successfully. That means that that drug might work in my cancer as well. Does everybody understand that? Or what I can also do is I have these databases that have experiments where they use drugs. And I can have my gene list, right, of a particular cancer, and I could say, are there any experiments using drugs that actually reverse the changes I'm seeing that's going on in my cancer. And I do that a lot. And you can look and sure enough, there'll be lots of drugs and there'll be anti-cancer drugs that actually work on your list based on the actual experiments in that study. So what you're doing is you're not trusting somebody to tell you what's in your gene list. You're seeing it related to everything else. Like it's, you're, you're relating it to actual data. And I, that is where I, I, I have no doubt is where bioinformatics is going, right? It's not trusting what 30, you know, some old farts said 30 years ago. It's actually here, here's my gene list. What else does it look like, right? And finding those, those studies that are exactly like your gene list or exactly opposite your gene list, and it tells you way more about what you want to do.